29 weeks out from the Texas Pro. I guess we're counting down now with weeks out. I'm still in the off season. We are in my office with my work partner. Working hard down here, Logan. Logan, there you are. <laughs> he just follows me around nonstop. Should we get a hello down, Logan? Say hello to everyone. Oh my gosh. He's just a slobbery, smelly mess. <laughs> but anyway, we are doing my update today. So I did my check-in picks, and I, what I wanted to show today, instead of having you follow me around with my food or training, is that I'm gonna actually show on the system that I use to coach my clients, but also we have like our J3U coaches coaching through, and I'm gonna do my check-in with you, like what I look at for my visuals, kind of walk you through my own process. So let's jump over to my computer and go through the check-in. Okay, so here is my desktop view of the coaching app that I use, which is Kahunas. And Kahunas is actually made by Mark Fox, who is my partner in J3U. So he is the brain behind all the tech, branding, marketing, everything you see. He's a, a huge centerpiece in this. So he's developed an app um, that I've given feedback on several coaches. I mean, there's, I think, believe there's like 3,000 coaches that use the app now. Um, and it's all made exactly for what we want to do as physique competitors and coaches. So I coach myself in it just like I do my clients, which makes it really easy. So this is my check-in that I normally pull up I want to I submit it. Now I'm coaching myself, so I don't fill in all of my details because uh, I just I document them in my log and that's kind of where I track the, the depth of it. But I also know what happened for the week for myself. Um, first things first, like when I do a check-in, for myself, for my clients, I don't look at any of the information. I just look at visuals. And that's going to be just to help give you the best objective eye that you can. I mean, it's very subjective judging. However, you don't want to influence off seeing like, oh, man, John gained three pounds this week. What's that look like? He's pro He's got to look soft. And then you're hunting down a softer look in the visuals rather than just letting it be and seeing what you see for what it is. So like I, what's great in this thing is I can pull up my visuals like instantly and compare them, which is cool. So, and the only thing is that they do shift a little bit, so I can't adjust them, but um, you know, all the front shots going to hold the, the, the best in the off season. It's the first thing to get lean. It's the last thing that's going to get fat. So you're not going to see like vast changes like on a week to week basis on your front shot, which you shouldn't. Like, gosh, if you see this shot get fatter from this week to this week, likely something's going wrong. You know, or you had someone check in a day and maybe the day before they had like this huge cheat meal or something. So that would be what I would want to investigate in the other data that we're going to look at here shortly. So based on this, like we can see like visually uh, the roundness, condition, everything looks really on par from the front shot. The next shot to look at from there would be like quarter turns are really exposing as well and looking for like where do you get soft fast? Well, it's going to be like through the glute, through the oblique area. Then we can also, I mean, on a week to week basis in the off season, it's you're not going to be you're going to have a really hard time seeing like muscular gain and progress. Um, it's just like muscle doesn't grow that fast. So what we're really looking at here is making sure that gym performance goes up, body weight's trending up, and visually, we don't see when someone getting fat week to week. Now, the next one would be the back shot to look at. And again, like condition is like just really, really close. Like th this is the spot where you're going to see someone change the fastest. They're usually going to gain fat on the back end first. And so we'd look at like where I gain quick would be the lower back, the glutes and the upper back area. And, and overall, this is like holding very, very reasonably. Um, we can also look at the rear double and get some other data points visually to see. Um, maybe we argue that the lower back is a little bit, a little bit softer, but it's, it's, it's minuscule, like an acceptable amount for off season progress to be had. And of course, like still glute lines and stuff around. This is now 
almost coming up on four months uh, post show for me. Um, what other shots? How about most muscular? Let's let's see that again. A front shot. It's going to be within good condition. One shot that I always like to pull is this one because I think it gives you like the best gauge on the back shot of condition because you're like clinching and flexing everything. And um, again, like comparison across, I think it's just really close. So, okay, visually we're not seeing vast changes in condition. So let's look at actual some like of the more objective data, body weight, 245 to 248. Whoa, John gained three pounds this week. So we have to ask, is that going to be accurate? And this is why I don't think you should go off a weight to a weight off your check-ins and why I do daily weights and look at averages and trends. I think you need all three to really gain perspective of what's happening to someone across their check-in week. Um, overall, I'll tell you, like my strength has been progressing really well across these check-ins. Uh, we can oh, actually I forgot I'm not I'm not logging in this app but in, in here I, I can actually monitor like training progression but I log it separately but I, I already know like strength overall for the week is like ticking along pretty well um, one thing is that this week it is accumulating on me the fatigue just from hitting some all-time strength highs this week really on my pendulum squat hit the highest load I've ever done um for reps and i could tell it's beating me up like it's only a matter of time of doing that much weight for that long I, it's just i can't sustain it so what i'm going to need to do from a training wise uh perspective this week is i'm going to add in an extra rest day tomorrow and then on my uh, my l normal leg session I think I'm going to dial it back to only do like leg extension, leg curls, and I'm going to do my back work on that day. I just need a break from like the heavy, like lengthen loaded type squat patterns. Those will beat me up, especially my quads. Like upper body's pretty good, so I just need to drop the overall systemic fatigue and a little bit locally, connective tissue wise, around my on my quads. So anyway. Um, this is where I can log my daily habits, and so my daily weights, um, calories, steps, and this is where I think where you have a lot of value in, in monitoring someone, because what I'll look at is the average. Um, now, I, I, I don't have this data point where I checked in, but we'll look at the average of 245.4 compared back to last week, 243.8. So now we're really looking at like a 1.6 pound increase for the week. Like, okay, it's not three pounds. It's an average of increase of 1.6 pound. Now, the next thing that I'd want to look at is the trim line. What direction is someone heading? Because you could have someone that's up in weight, but they've been trending down all week. And so you need to gain insight and in like what's happening. You know, are they all of a sudden we see their step count increasing a lot? Did they miss a meal in these days? Like that's going to help give us insight into what to do uh, change wise for the plan. So you do see relatively i kind of hold here then i bump up on friday and saturday and that is like my consistent thing that happens i hold this is the week before i bump up on saturday uh friday then through sunday same thing this week bump up again so what happens on friday to me is i train legs and i have sushi um so there is like some localized inflammation that happens and then i have a little bit more sodium that day saturday is my off day where I don't, I just chill and <laughs> try not to do cardio, just do steps. And I also um, will eat more veggies that day. And usually that's the night that Renee and I do some type of like f meal at home, um, not off plan, but we'll like sub in maybe fish for chicken. And we might do like some extra veggies that are different. So I, I just get a little bit bloated that day and it usually drops down. Um, and that's when I have like my lower weights earlier in the week. Now, this past weekend, we did go downtown and I had subbed out some barbecue, like smoked turkey for my chicken. And it was really high sodium. And we ended up walking around down there. I did get my normal water intake in. And so I was very bloated <laughs> uh, these past weekend. So I ended up, you know, today I'm, when I'm talking to you doing this, I'm, I'm back to 246.4. So I think I, I relatively have a, a pretty good rate 
a body weight increase if we consider all these factors. And so this is how my brain works when I'm walking through a check-in to give you some insight on assessing the physique and looking at body weight and how to make those decisions. But I've consistently been uh, trending upward across these past weeks um, about this kind of one pound-ish per week. And the visuals are still like really, really stellar. We can compare back, and this is when you'd actually want to look at, you know, muscular gain changes across the course of uh, months. Um, you know, we can look back here. This is uh, December 4th, right, right around the time I started pushing up. So we're looking at a 14 pound difference here. And let's like, let's look at the back shot, for instance. And um, I just, I am a much bigger human now. <laughs> That's what's changed. Like condition is still good. It's not quite as good. Um, a little bit softer in the lower back. Posing's a little different. Um, glutes, barely different. Barely different. Um, let's look at like a, let's look at this quarter turn. I will say the waist is not able to pull in quite as much. And this is the off season guys. This is like the truth of the off season. Like it's, you're going to have a larger waist in the off season. Just simply when you go from eating, you know, two 2,500 calories on prep or something to then having, you know, over 4,000, you're just going to have more volume of food in you. So the, the idea though is like, it, are you becoming bigger? And that's in the areas that you do want to see per, uh, progression take place. Like across the back shot, like, are you getting bigger? Like, you know, um, absolutely. Let's look at, I always like looking at the most muscular. So like, you know, condition's still really, really good here, but I mean, they're like, legs are fuller, more roundness to my delts, triceps, chest, like everything's just becoming larger. And that's up 14 pounds. So this has been like um, lean progress. And also, it's when you're comparing back over the course of months is when you can see actual muscle, muscular gain and what you might want to look at programming-wise. So if you're saying like, all right, delts are proving, but chest isn't. What am I doing in my program? Like, am I seeing as much progress you know, in my, my pressing movements? No. Do I not get a great connection to my chest when I'm pressing? No. Well, maybe we should fix the cueing and exercise choice. Um, or maybe it is in like, hey, yeah, you know, I, I'm not moving up a lot in strength. I get a good connection to my chest. I'm recovering. Maybe you need to prioritize a bit more volume to that area. So just, again, some more thought processes to think on when you're doing your own assessment, if you're self-coaching or, hell, if you're coaching clients as well. So based on this data, like we look at this. Conditioning it holds really well. Body weight's training up. Gym performance is moving up. I'm not changing the plan. Like I'm just going to keep riding this out because it's working very well. Nutrition wise, um, I have this all logged out of what I actually eat throughout the day. Little things change here and there, but for the most part, like this is it. You'll see a pretty big extensive list because I make some crazy stuff in the off season. Um, I have oats, I have a bagel, blueberries, I have rice. I have like four different carb sources in meal one. In spinach, I have asparagus, a mix that I put in my egg whites. Um, then I have my intra, which is maltodextrin and EAAs. Uh, Post-workout, I have some whey, oats, and then I have some white rice that I add into those oats. And then I have just some solid meals from there. Chicken, rice, green beans, and peaches. And then my, my next meal is chicken. I have a salad with uh, some rice cakes and this uh, macro Mike peanut butter powder stuff. It's not, it's what I log, but it's just a peanut butter powder that I use. So low fat, but I get a, like peanut butter um, to calorie control it that way. Some strawberries. Then my last meal, you've seen this on Instagram <laughs> and my other YouTube is uh, I make a Ninja Creamy and ice cream and then like a oat brownie type cake for like a dessert so it's a you know not your traditional kind of bodybuilding diet but you look at my visuals and what's happening like you, you kind of can't deny that um for one i think food variety is important i think enjoyability in your diet is extremely important for adherence because i don't go off plan i love my diet and that's a huge thing for having 
um, some consistent progress is someone that doesn't deviate. I have my one sushi meal per week. That's the same thing I eat every single week. So that's predictive as well. Outside of that, it's like Renee and I sub in a meat for meat. Like when, when we have on our weekends, this meal for, I'll pull out the chicken breast. I might have shrimp. I might have white fish or something like that. But I this has been what, what I've been doing. So um, non-trained days, carbs just cut down, down to 250 grams. Fats come up just a little bit. Because this is actually the day that Renee and I have our off, not off plan, but our, our meal at home, which uh, we might do a fatty fish at night. And that's kind of why I have a little bit more fats allocated here. So no changes to the diet this week. You know, cardio, <clears throat> I hit about 9,000 steps per day. I'm also doing, um, I, now I had noted here actually, uh, uh, yeah, I guess I just haven't updated this yet, so I will update it now because that's what I have been doing. So, four days a week, I'm doing 10 minutes of hit for six sets. That's what I've been doing. <clears throat> six sets at one minute. And, well, that's all updated. So... That's my cardio. Haven't changed that. Um, supplement gear wise, you know, I share that stuff on J3U. I need to keep something exclusive for the J3U members in the forum. So it's not special, guys, what I do. It's like, I, I'll tell you at least a little bit. I use Test Master on Growth Hormone. Those are my three compounds that it is so simple. There's nothing crazy. It's just enough to keep exact progress moving along here. Um, for my past off season, it's about a 20% increase in total anabolic load that I've used. And I based that on the rate of progress I made last off season and also was decent, but I know I want to push it up higher and, and uh, kind of push the boundaries because my health is really good. So <clears throat> um, just made a slight increase there, but join the J3 forum. I, I'm, I'm completely transparent on what I do. I just know I need to keep something exclusive for my paying members that are there. So if you want to join the forum at 20 bucks a month and I answer hundreds and hundreds of questions on all kinds of topics. So anyway, I will wrap this up. This is my check-in again. Thank you all so much for following the journey along and I will talk to you next update.